and money. Let's get cracking, because we are going to start with the WTO, the World Trade Organization, which has upgraded its global forecast. It says trade will shrink less than expected this year. However, mm, the rebound will be much weaker than originally forecast. It says there are signs of trade bouncing back from the deep coronavirus-induced slump. And all of this comes as the big boss of the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, has warned that while the downturn may not be as bad as originally feared, the road to recovery will be long, uneven, and uncertain. OK, let's get more. Cornelia Meyer is an economist and chairman and CEO of MRL Corporation, and she joins us from Lagenthal near Bern in Switzerland. Cornelia, always a pleasure, my friend, to have you with us. Hey, for the uninitiated, can you help us out here? If trade isn't as bad at the moment as what was originally forecast, why will the rebound be longer and, 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 and weaker, if you will? Well, it's very simple because you, you're not going down, but it's 21 to, um, to the, by 21 to um, uh, 19 to what is it, 60, uh, 32 percent as, as previously expected, and only by 9.2 percent. Obviously, you're not going go, to go up that steeply. But you know what I find is very interesting that what the WTO forecasts now is pretty much where we think oil demand will be at the end of the year. So trade will be going down by about 9.2 percent, about 10 percent, which will be pretty much where oil demand is by the end of the year for the year. So that's very interesting. It shows us that oil is the stuff that ships the goods that do the trade around. And Cornelia, though, but isn't the cruel, isn't the cruel twist here is that it actually it would be trade between nations that would help a lot of these economies rebound, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you look at it, trade was the, 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 the instrument, the trigger that got hundreds and hundreds of million um, out of poverty into the middle classes, especially in China. It helped China to come from being, you know, number 15 in the world to number two in the world in terms of, of the global economy in less than 20 years. So, yes, absolutely. But the environment for trade has also altered. You know, it's it's not just Donald Trump and his trade wars that have made things more difficult, because if there is a new president, whether it is Donald Trump, whether it is Joe Biden, the anti-Chinese sentiment will still be there. And currently, the world's tr largest trading nation is China. Yeah. It sure is. Very briefly, um, we know the, the big boss of the, the WTO stepped down, I, I believe it was last, last month, Roberto Azevedo. Um, all eyes are on who's going to take over the helm. I think it's been whittled down from eight to two, I'm not too sure, but a vote is supposed to be next month. But we're hearing that the political wrangling could, could delay that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's been it's been going down from eight to I think five, and now today it's supposed to come down to two, and it's going to be highly political. There is um, there's a Nigerian, the former Nigerian um, finance minister Ngozi, who didn't become Iwala, who didn't become the world uh, world bank chief, who has a very good chance. There's Liam Fox, who has a very good chance. There is I am a, I, I'm particularly partial um, to Al Tawajiri, the um, the the. Saudi candidate because he's the only one amongst them who has ministerial experience and private sector experience. And as you know, trade is about intergovernmental um, goings on, so you need the ministerial experience. But it's also about private okay. sector. Okay. Cornelia Meyer, always a pleasure, my friend. Stay safe and well, and we'll check in with you very soon. Thank you, Aaron. You're welcome, Cornelia. Okay, let's go and touch on some of the other stories making headline news. 